take a look at our first example, the problem says that two supplementary angles form a 7 to 2 ratio. I want to find the measure of both angles. The easiest way to do this is to take those two angles, put the two angles together. If you put supplementary angles together, they're supposed to have a sum of 180 degrees. If I put those two angles together, I can actually form a straight angle with my two supplementary angles. So to help you visualize this, I'm going to draw a straight angle being formed by my two angles. If you look at that 7 to 2 ratio, what the 7 to 2 ratio is telling me is that I'm breaking that 180 degree angle up into equal sized pieces. Seven of those pieces are going to go with one angle, two of those pieces are going to go with the other angle. The easiest way to do this, very straightforward. Let x represent the size of each of those pieces. Seven pieces are going with one angle, two pieces are going with the other. When you're writing, a, writing an equation, one of the things you can always ask yourself is, do I have things that are equal to each other and set them equal, or do I have things that add up to a certain sum? In this case, I have values that add up to a certain sum. This whole pair of angles is going to add up to 180 degrees. So I can take the 2x, add the 7x, set that sum equal to 180 degrees, I end up getting that 9x is equal to 180 degrees. When I divide both sides by, t by 9, I end up finding out that x is equal to 20. At the end, though, it didn't ask me to find the value of the variable. It asked me to find the measure of the two angles. So I need to substitute 20 degrees back in for x. 7 times 20, 140 degrees. 2 times 20 is 40 degrees. Those are the measures of my two angles. Let's take a look at my second example. In my second example, I'm asked to find the measure of an angle. It tells me that an angle is 6 more than twice its complement. I want to find the measure of the complement. First of all, when you're trying to write these equations, you need to figure out what your variable is going to represent. You'll notice in this problem, we're told something about the measure of the angle in comparison to its complement. I'm told nothing about the measure of the complement. The angle that I'm told nothing about is the angle that I want to use to set my variable. So I'm actually going to let x represent the measure of the complement. It tells me the measure of the original angle based off the measurement of that complement. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what my variables represent. x is going to be the complement. The other angle is 6 more than twice the complement. So I can represent that measure using the x variable. I can avoid having to write a system, basically, is what that says. So if my original angle is x, that's the complement, the other angle is 6 more than twice this x value. 6 more than twice x would be 2x plus 6, and that would be the original angle. These two angles are complementary, which means if I put those two angles together, I'm going to get a right angle. So visually, I'm going to draw a picture in which I combine these two angles together to make a right angle. So visually, here's what I'm dealing with. The two angles go together to make a right angle. Uh, one angle is x, the other one is bigger. The complement uh, the original angle is actually bigger than the complement is. Notice the two angles have a sum of 90 degrees. Because these have a sum of 90 degrees, I can add the two parts together. The x and the 2x plus 6 can be added together to give me a sum of 90. I can do a little bit of simplifying here. I end up finding out that I have 3x plus 6 equals 90, and I can go ahead and solve from here. Subtract 6 from both sides, I get 3x is equal to 84. Uh, at this point, I can divide 84 by 3. 90 divided by 3 is 30. Uh, in this case, when I divide 84 by 3, I'm going to end up finding out that x is equal to 28. Um, at the end, you always want to go back and you want to find out, did you answer the question? This is asking me to find the measure of the complement. If I look back at my original variables, 
I actually let x stand for the complement in this case. So when I found out that x was equal to 28, 28 degrees actually ends up being my solution. Had I been asked to find the measure of both angles, I could have substituted back in over here, and I believe I would have found out that, that was a 62 degree angle. But that's the basic idea there, okay? Pick your variable, find out what it represents, possibly consider setting up a picture to help you visualize, set up your equation, and solve your equation. Let's take a look at the next example. In the third example, I have a statement that says the measurement, or the measure of the supplement of an angle is 30 degrees less than five times the complement. I'm then asked to find the measure of that angle. I'm going to use a slightly different approach in this case because I'm not told just that I have angles that are supplementary or just angles that are complementary. So the problem I have is visually I don't know. Should I have my angles add up to equal 90 degrees and create a right angle, or should I have my angles add up to equal 180 degrees and have a straight angle? Because visualizing this is more difficult, I'm going to take a different approach here. I'm not going to use a visual approach. I'm actually going to take the statement, and I'm going to write that entire statement into symbols, because it's a really complicated statement. And what I'm hoping is, using, using equation solving, I'm going to be able to come up with a solution perhaps more easily than trying to use the visual approach I used before. Okay? You'll notice here that everything is based off the measure of that original angle. Okay? So I'm going to set my variables. Uh, I'm going to let x represent the measure of the original angle. I need to represent the measure of the supplement and the complement of the angle because they're both also mentioned in the original problem. Well, to find the complement of an angle, I subtract that angle measure from 90. If I have a 10 degree angle, the complement would be 90 minus 10. If I have a 20 degree angle, the complement would be 90 minus 20. If I have a 30 degree angle, the complement would be 90 minus 30. In this case, I have an x degree angle. So the complement would be 90 minus that value of x. That's my complement. I also need to represent the supplement of the angle using the same x variable as well. Same kind of idea. 180 minus whatever angle measure I have will give me the supplement of an angle. So I'm going to use 180 minus x to represent the supplement of that x degree angle that I set up here in the original. Okay? Now it's time to write my equation. Uh, how do I do this? Well, I'm literally going to take the words in this statement and I'm going to use that to write an equation. Okay, it says the measure of the supplement of an angle. I said the supplement is going to be represented as 180 minus x. It says the measure of the supplement, 180 minus x, is equals 30 less than 5 times the complement. Okay, so it says here that I'm going to be taking 5 times the complement. 30 less than that. Uh, 5 times the complement would be to take my complement, which is 90 minus x. That entire complement is being multiplied by 5. So I've got to put that in parentheses to show it's not just the 90 that's being multiplied by 5, it's the entire thing. Okay, so I have 5 times 90 minus x. Notice it says 30 degrees less than that. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 30 from that. So let's take a look at this statement. It says the supplement of an angle, 180 minus x, is 30 less than 5 times the complement. I literally took that statement and reworded it using variables, or rewrote it using variables. Uh, now I have to solve a little bit of simplifying here. I'm going to multiply out using the distributive property. I'm going to get 450 minus 5x minus 30. Okay, a little bit more simplifying. 450 minus 30 is 420. So combine my like terms. Uh, I want to get the variables on the same side here. Uh, let's see. I will put the variables on the left side. So I'll add 5x to both sides. Uh, that's going to leave me with 4x. I'm going to subtract the 180 from both sides to get my numbers on the same side of the equation. Equal sign comes down. 420 minus 180, I believe, is 240. And now at the end, I can finish this out. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. I end up finding out that x is equal to 60. 
You always want to go back and check and see, did you answer the question? You'll notice in this case, I'm letting x represent my angle. So x was 60 degrees, that's my final solution. Had I been asked to find the complement, I could go over here, take 90 minus 60, that would have been 30. Could have found the supplement by taking 180 minus that x value of 60, and, uh, and of course in this case we would have given me 120 degree angle.